Um, in this module, we're going to start talking about systems of equations. Um, you've actually seen some of this before in Algebra 1. Um, but before we kind of talk into talk about how to solve systems of equations, we want to talk about what does it mean to be a solution. So when we're like solving an equation algebraically, it's the value or values, could be more than one thing, that make an equation true. Um, graphically, what a solution is, is it's an intersection. So if we're solving a quadratic equation, for example, it's the intersection with the x-axis. If we're solving a system, which means, um, I'm actually going to add that definition here, linear, or sorry, systems, let's do that. Systems is more than one equation. So a system means we are solving um, a, how do I want to say that, a group of equations. And when we say solve, when we're talking about more than one thing, we're asking about where do those two, in this case we're going to do two, where do those two um, functions intersect? So graphically, we can just look at that. So this is saying, given the two graphed equations, so we've got, let's call the line, we'll say the line is f of x, and the parabola is g of x, what values of x satisfy f of x equals g of x? So we're asking, what are the solutions to this system? Okay, so what that means is we're looking for the intersections of f and g. And notice it asks what values of x. So here, I'm looking at this x value, I've got an x value of negative 2 is where those intersect, and then this value of Oh, sorry, that's not an intersection. That's an intersection with the x-axis. I want to know where the f of x intersects g of x, which is when x is 1. So x equals negative 2 and x equals 1 are solutions to that system. So what that means is if I were to plug in negative 2 into f of x, I would get some y value. I would get the same exact y value for g of x. If I were to plug in 1 into either of those functions, I would get the same y value as well. So that's what that means. A solution is an intersection um, when we're looking at more than one equation. And you'll notice they don't have to be lines. In this case, I had a parabola and a line. But when we're the ones we're going to be solving, you guys, are going to be composed of two lines. So how do we check then algebraically if a solution is, or if a point is a solution? So we're asking, is this the intersection of these two lines. If it is, I should get the same exact value when I plug them in. So another uh, way to think about this is back to this definition. It's values that make an equation true. So if it's a solution to the system, it has to make both equations true. So I'm gonna substitute four in for x and negative one half in for y, but I'm gonna do it in both equations to see if it works for both. If it only works in one, it's not a solution to the system. It would only be a solution to that one line. Okay, so let's try that first one. So we've got four plus six. We're at, we're checking. Is that equal to four times negative one half? Oh, one half, not. Okay, so four times negative one half is negative two. Uh, and four plus six is not negative two. So this cannot be a solution to the system because it doesn't satisfy one of the equations. So I'm just gonna, you don't have to do this. Um, once you find it doesn't work in one of the equations, you just know it's not a solution, but just for um, consistency sake, I'm gonna show um, the second equation. So I've got two times four plus eight times negative one half. Is that equal to one? Okay, so we've got eight minus four which is not equal to one, so this one didn't work in either. Um, but even if it had just worked in one, it would not be a solution. So it is not a solution to the system. Okay. All right, so here, you guys, is kind of what we're going to look at um, Today is we're just going to be graphing lines and looking for solutions or their intersections. So we have um, some different ways we can talk about linear systems. So linear means it's a system composed of one or more line. Okay, so if it's consistent, it means that there are intersections. And then we have two different options. 
if it has just one intersection, so I've got two lines, uh, I'm sure we'll do it like this. Okay, so this intersection where those two lines intersect, that is the solution. And it's only one solution. So it's one point where those intersect. And you might be asking, well, how can there be more than one intersection with two lines? Well, here's the other option. We can have infinitely many intersections, which notice the lines have the same slope and the same y-intercept. Another way to think about that, it's the exact same line. So if I have one line and then another line exactly on top of that, those two lines are intersecting at every possible point. So that means there are infinitely many solutions. We call that a dependent consistent system. If there's only one solution, it's an independent consistent um, system. We do have the option that there are no solutions. Um, we call that inconsistent. This happens when there are no intersections and that happens when there are parallel lines. So parallel lines have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. So same slope, different y-intercepts. Okay, so that's how we can classify systems. So you're gonna be asked to do that on the problems that go with 3.1. Okay, so this is the other part of the section you guys is actually being able to solve graphically. So we're going to graph these two lines. So right now this one, has a slope of one and a y-intercept of negative three. So I'm gonna do this one in red and we'll do this one in blue. Okay, so I'm gonna go down to the y-intercept of negative three and I'm gonna go up one over one. And I would use a ruler on these, you guys, or keep the slope pattern going so that you're being really accurate with your graph because we wanna see where do they intersect, right? That's how I'm gonna find my solution. So I'm taking the slope pattern to get exact points. Okay, and then like I said, if you wanna use a ruler or just make sure you're graphing those points really accurately and extend them pretty far. Cause again, I wanna see where does this red line intersect now this blue line. So now I'm gonna graph this one. Okay, um, it's not in slope intercept form. So I'm gonna first subtract three X so I can write it in kind of the usual Form. So now my y-intercept is 5 and my slope is negative 3. So I'm going to plot 5 and then I'm going to go down 3 and over 1. Again, I'm going to keep that pattern going. Down 3 and over 1. Okay, good. So there I got my intersection where they're going to cross. Down 3 and over 1. Okay, so I got a pretty good, now, accurate graph. And I can easily see that point where they're going to cross. Okay, so that is the solution. Now, how you guys are going to write your solution is an ordered pair. So the solution is what are the coordinates of that intersection point? So it's two, negative one. And that would be the solution. And there's kind of your work is the graph to go with it. So you're gonna be, um, for this problem set, you're gonna be graphing and finding a solution. And you're also gonna be classifying as consistent or inconsistent, and then independent or dependent if it is consistent.